So I'm here to talk about a National Building Code Awareness Project to address what we talked about when we were in Atlanta. And Chad wasn't there. There was a family addition, I think, happening, right? In 2015. And the splash then, does anybody remember that? Piano player on the stage in Atlanta playing what? What song? Georgia On My Mind. It's beautiful. Um, and not just because of those clever extras. This is one of my favorite conferences because it's always just a joy to come and be with people who are like-minded. We consider all of you bona fide members of the disaster safety movement and building codes are the unfinished business of our movement. How many of you believe that building codes and standards and how and where we build are critically important to our movement? Raise your hands. Okay. Keep your hands up if you think that they are also sexy to the public. <laughs> okay, so oops, so now you know what this project is about. Um, this unfinished business that we've talked about so much is something we've had the pleasure of trying to tackle. So today is part of our soft launch rollout to the friends and family of the movement to talk about where we are and to also hope to inspire you and provide you with the tools and preview the tools for you that you'll be able to use to truly make this topic sexy. Because until we get building codes as a top priority, as a social value, and as a norm, we're not going to win, right? The things that are happening out there as described by our um, previous speaker and mentioned by Chad are going to continue. So let me just start with some quick building code basics. You already know these things, but just got to be thorough because I used to be a teacher. So what are the basics of building codes, okay? Building codes, as you know, are created as models by our legacy and founding partners at the Code Council every three years through a consensus process, okay? They set forth minimum standards, not maximum, not beyond code, okay? And they also are um, the critical part of helping communities bounce back after disasters. And study after study after study in 17 and 18, and even today, we see the buildings built using these codes do better, okay? So they are just the critical piece that we need to get this done, right? Building codes are proven performers. Thank you, FEMA Matt team, for this great photo. It really kind of says it all. If you look at the picture of the building and the age other than the one, from 1970 that was then retrofitted and, and raised up to 2008. You can see, and this is high wind, this is Rockport, this is um, Hurricane Harvey. Some folks forget there was a wind event, right, associated with that too. Um, you can see very clearly that the performance is directly correlated to the code use. Okay, so this is not breaking news to any of y'all. Um, similarly, again, just to make sure we recap, building codes, the economic impact is proven. We've had over 40 years an average of about six of these events. Thank you, Noah, for this great data, because we need data to make our point, right? But then in the last several years, that has doubled. Does this trend continue? Do these billion-dollar disasters continue to occur with increasing, accelerating? Yeah, probably. Why? We love living where the disasters are. And that's not going to change, right? FEMA's given us great data on the percentage and the odds of the building surviving so much better if it's built using codes, right? We need that data. We now have that data. We also know, courtesy of FEMA, that loss is avoided. How hard is it in our work to prove a negative? When our job is done well, nothing happens. That's tough. That's tough. And so this kind of economic impact data is really helping move the policy needle. And I know that later today there's going to be a FEMA showcase. Don't miss it because there's policy progress happening out there as well. The dots are connecting, the economic, the practical, the policy. All these pieces are converging. We are going to check the box around this unfinished business of our movement. Okay? So we know these things. But there's some challenges with codes. There are some who don't really like codes. So there are some, some offsetting competing interests. Um, things happen with codes. Okay? They get amended. They get weakened, they get elongated, they don't get enforced, they don't get properly resourced with dollars and cents, okay? To me, this is the worst part. The people affected most by these challenges are not there when the codes are made, okay? So how bad is it? How, how big a problem do we have 
there's new analysis out there being done at the very hyperlocal level. We need to look at, and, and it is being looked at, what's the presence of codes in especially pr disaster prone areas, okay? Are the structural codes there? Do we have what we need? Guess what? It's worse than we thought, right? Nearly 69% on average, approximate, a little bit up and down, this is quarterly, are without the codes necessary to confront the earthquake, the flood, the hurricane, the tornado, or other disaster that is out there, okay? So that's a problem. So all this is the background. You know these basics. Here we are. What are we doing about it? This is what we came up with. BCAP. Don't worry, the name got better. Building Code Awareness Project. Okay, the plan is research. We have gotta get into the hearts and minds of the public. We gotta find out how to make code sexy. We did that, okay? Then we have to come up with solutions to create code transparency, okay? And then we have to have a public awareness project so we can get the word out, and that's what we're here doing today. We're getting ready to go from this six months of soft launch to the friends and family into the greater national outreach effort, which will include a lot of things, and I get to show you some of them today, okay? So what did we learn first and foremost? I will tell you, we didn't learn anything we didn't already suspect. Okay, you ready? Codes are confusing, and it's easier for the public to have them out of sight and out of mind. They don't necessarily understand that codes aren't HOA rules or historic preservation or other things. They're thinking, gosh, that's somebody else's job, I hope, right? Codes are just not the thing that everyone comes home and talks about at night. That's okay, we kinda need that. Um, inside the qualitative phase and some of the quantitative, though, we did learn, we started tapping into this idea that there was a false sense of security about codes. We thought, okay, we need to figure out what that is. Because one of the things we learned about our work over 21 years is if we want to motivate the public to embrace what it takes to be disaster resilient, and that is really the cornerstone of how we work, you have to speak to their hearts and you have to go to them where they live, right? We can't turn them into experts on all these different things. That's not the point. But how do we get to them and make sure? So we started tapping into this idea that there's a false sense of security out there about building codes and standards and how and where we build. And in a lot of cases, the discussion was around, but it's just like my car. No one would ever let you build me a car if it didn't come off the factory production line just right with a big sticker that said everything it had, okay? So by and large, people said, you know what? We're protected already, so we're just not worried about it. I was worried that we were gonna do this. Well, I didn't, I hoped it wouldn't happen. Imagine if we tested, we knew people didn't think about codes. We proved that, okay? Imagine if we further found out that they knew that the codes weren't where they needed to be, yet they still didn't care about codes. Game over, right? Kind of like that terrible ending on Sunday night to Game of Thrones, just kidding. <laughs> Um, but that's not what we learned. In fact, our um, research told us something that we knew, but we didn't realize the breadth of it, and this actually is where the opportunity is. The idea that they may not have any code at all was considered terrifying to those that we talked to through our qualitative and quantitative research. And they said, no, that's not possible. That could never happen. This is America. That's not how we do things here. Hence the opportunity to have the conversation and make the topic of building code sexy. One of the things, and, and I will tell you, we have, as you can imagine, 60, 80 slides on the research that we could go into. I'm not doing that to you today. But I'll take invitations if you want to, because it's kind of interesting. But one of the most important exercises we did is something called max diff, or the maximum differential. It's just a math thing, right? Above 100, below 100. And this tests the relative strength or weakness of any message to the respondent. And a lot of times it has to do with the way that we ask the question or make the statement. But take a look at the top number here. Part of our research team includes a guy named Zach, who's brilliant, who helped figure out what people were thinking about with credit cards. And he was on the team that developed a statement, what's in your wallet, okay? These guys know what they're doing. We've worked with them for 20 years. They've always helped us. Um, this 226 number on the statement, I might not have any codes to, at all, was a, a real high, I think a record high in his work. 
So that's where we are starting with the Building Code Awareness Project. I highlighted, too, there's a little concern out there, a pretty strong statement regarding flooding. And that gives us something to talk about in the future. Just a quick sidebar, we also ask about the responsibility of local officials. And we were surprised to see in multiple runs and multiple settings that this issue was considered more important than some of the things you would think are traditionally important here. And it's really hard for me to see the confidence monitor. Okay, But like, look at what we beat out here. It's kind of interesting. So lots to do there. So what did we do? We came up with this, no code, no confidence. We have to disturb and disrupt the assumption that it's all good, OK? And B code confidence, more positive, and that's another way to say this, but we have to get at the problem. So it's no code, no confidence. Go to inspectorprotect.org, OK? And this is tested as well. You go to inspectorprotect.org. Right now, you can just hit locate me, except I don't know about that. You have to have location services turned on. Um, and you can find out what code is adopted, residential code, where you are, or you can put in an address, okay? We had to spend a lot of time on this. We had to color code it, break it down to make it simple, right? How does it work? We'll give you the codes, red, yellow, green, and black, okay? Um, Dominic Sims, CEO of ICC, is here, and regional um, headquarters for ICC is in Birmingham. I picked Birmingham. I'm not picking on you, Dom. But this is a good one because it shows the different statuses of building codes in and around Birmingham. You see green. That means current code adopted for residential. So that's an 18 or a 15 model. Yellow is code adopted but out of date. Red is no code adopted. Black is we don't know. We don't know. Okay, some of the considerations as we do this um, journey towards transparency for consumers is that there are limitations to the data, okay? And that's gonna change as we go over time, but we've started with adoption in IRC, but we won't finish there. We won't finish until we capture all of it, okay? We also have um, some states that don't report. There are five, I won't say who they are, but we're going to work with them individually to get their data into the national data set um, because we want their consumers to know. We will be continuously updating every month with updates, taking those black areas. A lot of unincorporated areas of Texas are a mystery. So is northern Utah County. I think it's a um, lake. There's just some places, even our partners at the Census Bureau told us, we don't know. We don't have boundaries for some of those places, okay? So there's some limitations, but we'll keep it updated. And there is a crowdsourcing function. So you guys can go on and say, hey, Flash, I've got the new code. We just adopted it. Send it in. We will get it vetted. We will trust but verify. And then we will get it included. OK, so that's the digital solution for inspectorprotect.org, how we're going to start to help consumers see what's happening out there. OK, so how are we getting the word out about this? This is where the fun stuff starts. We've partnered with the Weather Channel and a whole host of others. That is Dr. Rick Nabb from the Weather Channel on set for the commercial. I'm going to show you in a minute. We're doing outreach like this. We have partner toolkits. Show you some of that. Um, Building Safety Month. What's the theme this year? No code, no confidence. That came from this campaign. That's what partnership is all about and collaboration. I personally think that should be the Safety Month campaign slogan forever. We've got a lot of creative and fun things up our sleeves. And all of it to just kind of start to get the word out. Somebody sent me a video this morning. Have you ever heard of Turn Around, Don't Drown? That was one of our projects with the Weather Service about 13 years ago that we created. Again, we've got to get the public or we won't win the day. Okay? So let me see if I can go ahead and pull up. We're going to switch this out a little bit. Oh, let me show you what you can get by emailing info at flash.org. This is the partner toolkit. Inside of it, you're going to get all kinds of different things you can put on your social media, you can put on your YouTube channel, you can send to your friends. Things like this static graphic that captures that statistic that I showed you from the quarterly tracking, kind of attention getting. All kinds of cute shareable images. There's a movie trailer in here. It's a movie trailer. It's about 90 seconds long. The movie is about the towns of resilience and Perilsville. 
We actually hired a real movie trailer voiceover expert, and it's kind of scary, actually. But it gets the point across. Those are some of the grabs from that. We also have 30-second uh, videos. I'll, let me go ahead and um, tee this one up for you, and then we'll show it to you. This is, um, I think this one's self-explanatory, so we'll just go ahead and show this. Hey, excuse me. What's this? Oh, we don't really have traffic codes here. Going without codes doesn't work for traffic safety. It won't work for building safety either. See if your community has a strong building code, or any code at all, at inspecttoprotect.org. So inside that partner toolkit, you'll also get some longer form videos. Um, and these are, we're going to have a download site for you with the password, and you'll be able to get a 15, 30, 45, 90 second versions of all these things that you can download and share, and it's all ready to go. It's launching next week, so this is getting exciting. Let me show you one of the longer form videos. This is the one we're doing in partnership with the Weather Channel because they will be a major promotional and advertising partner for this, all um, gratis, of course, because they're great supporters of what we all do. Okay, 10 seconds, jumpers, you ready? Oh, uh, you might wanna tug onto your parachutes one last time, we, we don't inspect them anymore. Should be a problem, I think. Okay. You know what this feels like? Like there's a category five hurricane coming. And you're trapped somewhere with an outdated building code. That is crazy. Geronimo! Cut! Why would anyone take a leap of faith like that with their home? Without a building code, you can't be confident your home will protect you in severe weather. No code, no confidence. Check to see if your community has a strong building code at inspecttoprotect.org. I'm just glad we didn't do that with a real plane. So wrapping this up, this is where you come in. For all the great things that we get to do and the creative fun we have, whether we're working with our Disney partners or these zany folks that helped us put this together, it doesn't work unless it's out there. And that's what we would invite you to do is to become a partner with us in the no code, no confident, or the B code confident inspect to protect movement. Just like turn around, don't drown has become a very commonly heard and well understood call to arms. This is where we're gonna go to create transparency on this issue of building codes. When we do, things will be different. And I will tell you, it's gonna take us years, but it's okay because um, I did become a grandmother again this past year, but I'm not ready to throw in the towel quite yet. And I do truly believe that this is something that's going to get us to a place where people are asking these questions when they build, when they buy, when they come back from disaster. We want the first question to be, what code do I have? So just my final um, word here is I want to thank FEMA Building Science Branch and recognize John and Gargiola, who has been the quiet force for the multiple years it's taken us to get to this place, to put together different resources, private, public, and in between, and in kind, we're ready now, but only because of people like John and the team at FEMA, ICC, and ISO. We're gonna start this, we're gonna finish it with your help, so let's give him a big round of applause and thank you very, very much.